Hello, this is Richard Skipper of Richard Skipper Celebrates, and you are listening to Dave's Gone By on uncradio.com. Here on the 11th annual Total Theater Tony Show on uncradio.com, very happy to have a guest in the neighborhood that we haven't talked to, believe it or not, since 2007. And back then he was kind of bifurcated because he was both himself and the character he was playing at the time, Carol Channing, who, by the way, was also an actual real guest in the neighborhood a couple of years after that. But Richard Skipper has been very busy with other things. He is an entertainer. He's an arts advocate. He's got a blog that's called Richard Skipper Celebrates. You can go read that at richardskipper.com. He's also in the midst of writing a book about the history of Hello Dolly, and you can find out more about that at callondolly.com. But at the moment, we are calling on Richard Skipper to talk to him about an award tomorrow at the Tonys. Now, it's non-competitive. They've already given this. It's a Lifetime Achievement Award to Tommy Toon. Richard Skipper has a problem with this, and not Tommy Toon getting an award by any means, but the way that the Tonys are doing this. Richard, welcome back, and tell us what your problem is. Well, first of all, before we talk about my problem, I can't believe it's been since 2007 that I was on your show. It seems like it was yesterday. I know. Well, time does fly as, as you get up into my age neck in the woods, you know. And, and back then, you were physically on Long Island with us. Uh, well, I came to Long Island yeah. specifically to come to the studio. I remember we actually got lost that night. You may recall this. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, frantic energy to get there. But we made it work, and it was a wonderful uh, experience to be on your show. Thank and you. I'm thrilled that you've given me the opportunity to speak today about something that's very compassionate to me, and passionate, I should say. Mm -hmm. That is that the Lifetime Achievement Award this year, as you just mentioned, is being given to Tommy Toon. Tommy Toon is a nine-time Tony Award winner. He is the only person in the history of the theater and the history of the Tony Awards to receive two awards in two separate separate categories two years consecutively. So all of that is absolutely worth celebrating. Sure. The problem, however, is they are presenting this award before the broadcast. There doesn't seem to be time in the actual program itself to honor and celebrate this award. Now, just this past week, Michael Riedel, who writes for the New York Post, did a phenomenal article on how this really should be presented and addressed this year. And when you think of the body of work, and I like to call it a person's body of worth, what they've brought to the table. When you look at what Tommy Toon has accomplished in his lifetime and career in the theater... Hey, can you mention some of his the shows that he's directed and choreographed? Well, he won his first Tony Award in, I think it was 1974. I may be off on the year. I had to go and look at my notes. Uh, for Seesaw. Mm. Uh, he was Best Featured uh, Actor, and you can see these on YouTube, by the way. He, of course, sang the song, It's Not Where You Start, It's Where You Finish, Cy Coleman, wonderful song. And uh, that was his first Tony Award, but he has won as an actor. Uh, he also won for My One and Only. As a director, Nine uh, is one of his productions, choreography, uh, also for the Will Rogers Follies. I mean, the body of work that just over those years, Best Little World in Texas, and he's employed so many people in the theater. And as I said to someone just a few days ago, it's not just about what he has done in the past. If a show is such an iconic show that has made a mark, these are shows that we will be presented again and again and again through revivals and regional theaters and summer stock companies and high school productions years beyond the conversation that you and I are having right now. Obviously the composer and the lyricists are major people who are going to be remembered when these shows are revived, but it's almost like an Agnes DeMille thing, where, or Jerome Robbins, where people kind of recreate the original choreography sometimes when they revive these things. So this is very interesting that you bring up. As yeah. far as the work that Tommy Toon has done on Broadway, Tommy Toon has never done a revival. Wow. Everything has been an original production. And Tommy Toon's own take on everything is that he likes to see new works brought to the forefront. 
I mean, talking about the Tony Awards, in which the goal of the producers are to celebrate, obviously, the past season, which ends uh, just before leading up to the Tony Awards. But also, there are a few productions that they address to talk about shows that are in the works, hopefully, to come to Broadway. What the Tony Awards have turned into, and I understand this, I understand the commercialism, I understand all of that. What it has turned into is a big commercial for that year's Broadway season. And it has been announced that this past season is the most successful season in the history of Broadway. And it wasn't that many years ago where there were people saying Broadway was dying and the theater was dying off and everything. But there is a huge difference in terms of the theater goers. I don't know how old you are. Maybe we're in the same age bracket. Maybe we're not. I don't know. But the whole experience of going to the theater is very different from what it used to be. Everything is very commercial now in a way that the people that are making the decisions for Broadway are mostly business people and not arts-oriented people. There are pluses and minuses to that equation. Well, I mean, when I first started reviewing Broadway theater, I remember one summer there were, by the end of the summer, by August, there were maybe 12 theaters that had something playing in them, and all the other theaters were dark. They sold a theater to become a church. I forget which one that was. The not the Hellinger. Yeah, Mark Hellinger. It was the Hellinger, which is now the Times Square Church. Right, which we would love to have back as a theater, and because <laughs> now we need it. Now there's a traffic jam of shows See, waiting to get in. The last show that I think that played that theater, and again, I could be wrong. I think it was Sugar Babies with Mickey oh, Rooney and Ann Miller. Wow. Wow. But what I'm saying is, I mean, yeah, there are pluses and minuses. When the business people came in, and Disney came in, and found that Broadway could be a real moneymaker that turned things around, but it also, as you would say, hurt. Well, if a show isn't making X gazillion dollars, they're going to kill it immediately, and it, it squelches growth. We can say that Broadway is as healthy financially. Well, think about it, this yeah. for just a moment. Sure. We've got the Cadillac Theater. We've got the American Airlines Theater. Uh -huh. We've got all of these theaters that are named after corporations. And I would love to see some of these corporations invest in the theater and call them the Ethel Merman Theater or the Carol Channing Theater or the Ewell Brenner Theater or the Mary Martin Theater. And we've got the Helen Hayes Theater now on Broadway. And by the end of this year, Rumor has it that it's no longer going to be called the Helen Hayes Theater. It's going to be named after some business. I don't know what the business is. Well, wouldn't it be called the Second Stage or On Broadway or something like that? Or are they going to sell the naming rights? But, I mean, I, I get that, and I understand it, it sucks to have a, a place called the Cadillac Theater, the Cadillac Winter Garden. But, you know what, if that theater houses new work and new works in development, all right, so you put somebody else's name on the front of the marquee. But That's not as important. I really want to stress, and this goes back to where this conversation began. Ah, yes. We do not celebrate our legacy as we should. When I started out, I grew up in a small town in South Carolina. I started acting when I was 13 years old. I had this wonderful mentor, and she taught me, she said to me, every time you walk out on stage, you are carrying the mantle of every great entertainer that has gone before you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know who these people are. During our sessions together, she would ha bring things in for me to read, and if I didn't know who the Barrymores were, or who uh, Alfred Lutz and Lynn Fontaine were, she made sure that I went to the library and I checked out books and I looked these people up. It amazes me now, you mention a name and someone, rather than saying, who is that? I'd, I'd like to know more about that person. There is this feeling, and it's coming up with kids coming into the theater, mm -hmm. who have absolutely no sense of the greats that came before them. It's going to be erased. People are not going to know who these people are. And it's important that these kids that are watching the Tony Awards, and some kids will be watching it for the first time, and people in middle America, if they don't know who Tommy Toon is, they need to know who Tommy Toon is. And rather than brushing it under the rug and saying, well, nobody in the Midwest knows who this person is, which I don't believe, uh, to be honest with you, they need to make it known who these people are. So your, your problem and the issue is, and we've kind of wandered around to get to this point, is that the award going to Tommy Toon will not be broadcast live. They'll probably take like a 15 second clip of him it receiving will be a soundbite. A soundbite. Now, he is going to be presenting 
an award. He is presenting an award, from what I understand, for Best Director. But again, I remember watching the Tony Awards, the very first time that the Tony Awards aired in the 60s. Wow. And I grew up watching the Tony Awards as a kid in Conway, South Carolina, dreaming of someday being a part of this world. And interestingly enough, of a lot of those people, I have been very fortunate enough to become friends and acquaintances with many of them. We just lost the wonderful Betsy Palmer this week, mm. who became oh. a very dear friend. I grew up idolizing these people. And I also grew grew up in an age, variety specials and television specials, and there were three networks, and these three networks fight to get the largest demographic that they could get. So therefore, I grew up with the artist of my generation appearing on the very same stage with artists of my grandparents' generation and my parents' generation. And unfortunately, from the day that MTV came into the forefront, Everything's a niche audience now, and everything is being played to a very specific niche. And unfortunately, people who have grown up in these niches are not seeing the bigger picture. I want to celebrate the past, the present, and the future. And going back to what I started to say is yeah. when I watched those Tony Award specials, each year they had a theme, and they would honor the history of the theater. Oh, and that's all I'm asking for. Well, but here's the deal. In, in more recent years, I mean, it's almost a little churlish to castigate CBS, which puts three hours on Sunday night and devotes all three hours to the Tonys. I mean, I remember the first hour of the Tonys was on PBS. That's and it was a wonderful hour, and it was very informational and instructional, and many documentaries about all the designers. But all of America wasn't even seeing that whole hour. At least now, things get a mention. On CBS. I so agree you, with you, but yeah. the point is that with a little creativity, which is what the theater is all about, mm -hmm. you can make it work. If each presenter came out and had a reference, for example, to one of Tommy Toon's musicals over the years, there are ways of making the evening a celebration of a particular person throughout the show, rather than having one segment devoted to the in memoriam, for example. Wasn't there talk of even that not being on the uh, regular show? And the it was cut last year. Wow. And there was such an outrage over this that it is back this year. And I totally wholeheartedly agree with that. I think that's a very important segment. We kind of have to wrap this up with Richard Skipper, but you're a performer, you're a writer, you're an entertainer. If you were not just the suits at CBS, but the folks who are planning the show and directing it. How would you go about celebrating? What would be an idea? Uh, Josh Groban on, for example. Rather than having him come out and just sing a song, do a medley of songs that are from the musicals that Tommy Toon won those awards for over the course of the years. I mean, to win nine Tony Awards is something to celebrate. You know, have Kristen Chenoweth and Alan Cumming, who are the host and uh, hostess of the evening, do a medley, or do a five to ten minute montage, or throughout the show, as a bumper as you go into every commercial, Ooh. to show Tommy Toon accepting yet another award. There are nine clips that you have right there. Nine clips of him getting Tonys, or even more interestingly, nine clips of the shows that won those Tony Awards. That would be, that is a cool idea. I like that. You're still going to get in everything that you want to get in, but make it a celebration of the ultimate award that is being presented this year. Well, we celebrate having Richard Skipper back in the neighborhood. Remember that he has his website, richardskipper.com, where he blogs, Richard Skipper Celebrates. I wish you best of luck on your book that you're working on. Find out more about that at callondolly.com. And you're so busy with other projects, but we hope to get you back on the stages, doing your impersonations and other things real soon. Thank you again, Richard Skipper, for being with us. Thank you, Dave. This means the world to me that you gave me this platform. Thank you.